Hello and welcome to this tech talk on how to uh, enhance image contrast using the Contrast Limited Adaptive Histogram Equalization Algorithm, or CLAY for short, uh, which was introduced in Erdas Imagine 2020 onwards. So what's the reason for using the CLAY algorithm or, or it being a useful tool? Well, if you consider modern satellite imagery and airborne imagery as well, uh, it can have a high, very high dynamic range. Uh, and what this means is unlike older 8-bit data, you could take 8-bit uh, 0 to 255 scale data and be sure that when you displayed it to your, uh, your screen, which itself was 8 bits per color gun, uh, you, you were representing all the available, available brightness values from the imagery to in the, uh, the screen display. Uh, that's not true as you get into higher dynamic ranges. Uh, modern imagery is 10-bit, 11-bit, 12-bit dynamic range. Uh, and if you have 0 to 2047 dynamic range, but only a 0 to 255 uh, display range, obviously something has to give. Uh, you can't display all those brightness values, so you lose contrast when you're using a, a global lookup table to map those DN values to screen values. So if you've got very dark uh, cloud shadow pixels, very br bright clouds themselves, and then mid-tone land areas around it, uh, you can't display, uh, just using simple lookup tables, all the contrast that's inherent in that larger dynamic range data. Uh, all that contrast is there, you're just not seeing it through a simple lookup table display mechanism. So what clay does instead is it adaptively and locally adjusts the contrast. So it knows that once it gets into a very dark shadow area, it needs to boost those values up into the brighter end of the dynamic range. Conversely, in very bright areas like the cloud, it's going to suppress those. The areas in the mid-tone, it's going to keep those in the mid-tone. Basically what it means is that you can enhance contrast across the entire um, dynamic range that's available. Still keeping the original dynamic range as um, uh, 10, 11, 12, whatever bit range it may be. Uh, but then when you display that through a lookup table, you are seeing contrast enhanced in local areas. And how that's done in Erdas Imagine uh, is through the Spatial Modeler, Spatial Model Editor. So you can see here a very simple Spatial Model that uses the Enhanced Contrast using Clay operator, feeds in a raster input, a raster image that's 16-bit data, feeds it through Clay using certain parameters, and sends it out to a preview, or it could be sending it out to a, an output uh, raster file. And we'll talk a little bit about those parameters. So switching over to Erdas Imagine here, I'll show you what the original problem is. I've got a displayed a 16-bit, high resolution, high dynamic range uh, aerial photograph uh, that has some very bright locations, some very bright rooftops. So let's go ahead and zoom in a little. Uh, but it also has some very deep shadows. So you can see this building is casting a very deep shadow into these courtyards. And the problem here is that, yes, I want to bring out some of the detail that's inherent in the image in the shadow areas without losing detail uh, in these construction areas uh, on the building tops and so on. So traditionally if I want to do that uh, I can certainly adjust uh, the, the, uh, the contrast in the shadow areas by boosting the lookup table into those areas, but you can see what the effect is. My brighter, brighter areas are becoming washed out, saturated, um, and showing no contrast, no detail. Um, but yes, I can see information in the shadows. I want to be able to balance those two effects. I want to get contrast in the bright areas and contrast in the dark areas. So what we can do is actually create a spatial model. Let's go ahead and just hide my 2D view for a minute. And here's the uh, that clay operator I talked about earlier. Um, and the, if I and, uh, click on it to select it and show the properties in the properties panel towards uh, lower right, you can see some of the properties that can be set uh, on this operator. The, the three key ones really are a tiling uh, schema to use. 
uh, whether it might be 64 by 64, you're going to look at regions to boost contrast in the data. So what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to pick a slightly larger tile. I'm going to pick, say, 128 by 128 and a contrast retention factor, which is the other key value of 0.1. Um, the contrast retention factor basically uh, sets a, a, a relaxation parameter, if you will, on how far within each each region the uh, contrast can be maximized. So if you, if you think about it from the view of, say, I have a shadow area, perhaps it's 8-bit data. I've got a shadow that only has values of 1, 2, and 3 in it. Uh, I wouldn't want to stretch those shadow areas to the full 8-bit range so that 1, 2, and 3 become 1, 128, and 255. Um, that would kind of throw out the balance of the image too much. Uh, so you want to use that retention factor to, to just constrain the localized variation, maximum variation of, of the contrast adjustment. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and run that, and I'll run it with several parameters, and we'll take a look at what the results look like. So I've gone ahead and run the clay operator on the, the image. You see the original image still displayed at the moment. Uh, let's go ahead and zoom to one to one. Just uh, look at these shadow areas again. Bring in a shadow and perhaps some of the bright rooftops. And I'm going to turn on, here's a, a 128 by 128 tile result using a, a contrast retention factor of 0 0.05. And immediately you can see some details starting to come out in the shadow areas. But I've nicely retained contrast uh, on the roof areas. And let's keep uh, bumping up that contrast retention factor uh, to enhance the shadows more and more. But you can see whilst I'm bringing up uh, contrast that was in those formerly dark areas, uh, it's not over enhancing the contrast in the bright areas. So I still have detail displayed on these uh, building site roof areas and on this uh, building roof. But now as I uh, look in some, some of these other areas, so this park, I can see a lot more detail. In fact, let's uh, go ahead and ramp that down back to the original. You see very little information. Uh, say in this canyon between two buildings, I can see virtually nothing. If we uh, ramp up the clay parameters, you can see uh, tables out on the uh, ground, parked vehicles, people walking around, and other details, while still having the contrast uh, available on those bright areas. So you're not oversaturating some areas at the expense of um, um, uh, shadow areas or vice versa. So clay is a very, very powerful tool for enhancing the contrast uh, in your imagery when you have larger dynamic range data uh, and you need to see details in both uh, or in, in either dark areas or bright areas whilst maintaining detail across the dynamic range. So there you have it. But thank you very much for taking the time to watch this tech talk on the clay algorithm. I uh, hope you found it useful and enjoyed it and come back and watch some of our other uh, videos. Uh, stay safe.